the battle against climate change needs to go faster. We are behind schedule. We need to get to a point where we significantly reduce the current 50 gigatons that we release into the atmosphere every single year. Renewable power is one of the big avenues for decarbonization. It has a lot of uh, attention and it is important. I mean, it's the basis of most of the decarbonization. But not everything in this world can be electrified. You can't electrify a plane. You cannot electrify a petrochemical complex. These are called hard to abate sectors where you cannot use electricity to decarbonize them. So you need something else. The technologies to decarbonize are there. They have been developed to a large extent. So what we need to do now going forward is to actually scale these technology up to make sure that A, they work at scale, but B as well to get cost down. Currently the cost of these decarbonization alternatives carry a very big premium versus the fossil fuel that we are used to. Topso, formerly Helder Topso, was founded by Helder Topso. And Helder had two things on his mind always. One is science, he was a pure scientist. But the second one is he only did stuff that helped society. So very much socially driven and that's what we are still today. Green electricity can only decarbonize probably around 20% of what we need to decarbonize in this world. So the other 80% you need molecules and that's why green hydrogen is very important. What we do need to use the green electricity for is to power the device that makes green hydrogen. And that's what we call electrolysis. Essentially, what green hydrogen can do is that it can directly couple green electricity with the hard to abate sectors. So decarbonizing in the sectors that you cannot electrify. So when I say the sectors you cannot electrify, you think about the things that you use to move. So planes, shipping industry. So you can't just use green hydrogen for this. You actually need the next step, which is what we call the X part. So essentially what power to x is, is that you take the power, green power, so solar and wind, you power the electrolyzer, which produces green hydrogen, which would then make a final hydrogen derived product, which is then green ammonia, green methanol, green sustainable aviation fuel, or what we call green chemicals and green fuels. And that's 80% of the carbon emissions that goes up into the atmosphere, which needs to be decarbonized. If you look into the biggest part of producing green hydrogen and power to x a lot of the cost comes from the green electricity that you need to procure or that you need to utilize in order to produce green hydrogen. So at Topso, we have developed the SOEC electrolyzer and the SOEC stands for solid oxide electrolysis cell. It is highly much more efficient than the other electrolyzer. So it takes less renewable electricity to produce the molecules. Topso catalysts are used in roughly 50% of the total fertilizer production today, as well in uh, renewable fuels production. Catalysts are substances that um, basically help to speed up a chemical reaction and make it uh, faster and using less resources. Catalysts have a long history with Topso. It started in 1940 when Dr. Aldor Topso thought catalyst was a great idea and it was seen actually as a pioneer in the field of heterogeneous catalysts. Since then, we have developed something like 150 different catalysts, what I see as the backbone of our company. And today we are investing and innovating to also help the green energy transition with uh, even more advanced solutions. Sustainable aviation fuel is the term by which the aviation industry describes an alternative fuel that can be used as a fuel in combination with the existing jet fuels based on fossil fuel. We know that aviation contributes to between 2 and 3 percent of the total carbon emissions that we have globally today. So sustainable aviation fuel is a solution that is there today that can help the aviation industry reduce their impact to the environment and the demand is there, the supply is still not there today. So it's ramping up, but it's never fast enough that it can fulfill the demand of the aviation industry. 
there's a huge challenge that we need to solve, obviously, if we want to get to net zero by 2050. The most important thing right now is to compete with the other products that are out there, which is derived by fossil fuels. And of course, to push the regulators out there to ensure that we are able to hit net zero 2050. This comes with speed, costs and scalability. So we here at Topsoil, of course, wanting to be part of that solution. And that's why we took that really bold move and taking investment decision for the SOC plant last year to have the capacity out there so that we can decarbonize fast enough by 2050. We at Topsoil think it's important to be part of a broader coalition that is trying to achieve the same things that we as a company want to achieve. We take part in COP27, uh, 26 before that, we will be in COP28, and we are a member of the Hydrogen Council. Very different bodies, but both of them at the centre of the fight against climate change. There is something profoundly beautiful about working for a company whose sole purpose is to solve climate change, and then whose ways of solving climate change is to use innovation. And that's top so, right? And then there's something even more beautiful about being able to merge the why of that company and the why and your purpose of this world.